fractional parts. This is lesson five of math eight. Um, one very key equation we have to know when we're doing fractional part problems, and that is that fraction times the whole equals the part. So perhaps you've seen other variations of this, like fraction times of equals is. It's a good way to break down um, a sentence. But this is the basic uh, equation here, where if we take a fraction and we multiply it by how many parts are in the whole thing, we'll get the fractional part. All right, so let's use that equation to do this problem. How many minutes is one-sixth of an hour? So one-sixth is the fraction we're looking at using here. Uh, next, we have to figure out how many parts are in the whole thing. How many minutes is one-sixth of an hour? An hour is our whole, uh, but we're not going to use the number one. We're actually going to use 60 for 60 minutes because we want our answer to appear in minutes. So one-sixth of 60 minutes equals how many minutes? All right, so now we're going to multiply these two numbers. And when we do that, I would suggest you, if you haven't learned how to multiply like this, like this before, it makes things a lot easier. And um, that is to simplify first, like 6 goes into 60 10 times. Okay. And then we can just go 1 times 10 is 10. So 1 sixth of an hour is 10 minutes. Again, 6 goes into 60 10 times. 1 times 10 is 10. Next, um, 3 fifths of 30 questions on the test were multiple choice. How many multiple choice questions were there? Explain why your answer is reasonable. All right. Now our fraction is pretty easy to identify. It's 3 fifths. Next we have to determine what's the whole thing. How many parts are there in the whole thing? Well, in this case we're talking about a test. How many questions are there on the whole test? And that is 30. Okay, so it's very, very similar to the last one. Now we're going to multiply 3 fifths times 30, and we'll find out how what fractional part is uh, multiple choice questions. Okay, so 5 goes into 30 six times. And then we'll go 3 times 6 is 18. In other words, 18 multiple choice questions. Now we're also asked to explain why our answer is reasonable. Uh, there's several ways we could do that, but I would say that three-fifths is a little bit more than half of the questions that are multiple choice. And I would say that 18 is a little bit more than half of the 30 questions that are multiple choice. There's one way to look at it. Greta drove 288 miles and used 8 gallons of fuel. Greta's car traveled at an average of how many miles per gallon of fuel? Okay, so we don't need this equation, this fraction equation, to be able to do this problem. Uh, the first thing my eyes are drawn to is this miles per gallon. That's what we're being asked to figure out. Um, miles per gallon is a ratio, or a rate, actually. Um, and it's also a division problem. So I'm going to set this up like a fraction. 288 miles per 8 gallons. Okay, Per and a fraction bar or division, same thing. So we need to simplify this fraction. I'm going to use some long division here. 8 goes into 28 three times with 4 left over. And 8 goes into 48 exactly six times. So Greta's uh, average fuel consumption here is 36 um, miles per gallon. For every one gallon, she goes about 36 miles. Arrange these fractions from least to greatest. Well, we're going to talk about several ways to um, compare fractions. Uh, we'll just start with one today. And, and this one, the first thing I notice is that all three of the denominators are 5. I'm sorry, the numerators, the top number is 5. Um, well, that makes it very easy to compare. We don't have to get the denominators all the same, although we'd still get the same answer. Um, 5 twelfths is the smallest fraction here. And I know it's the smallest fraction because it's got the biggest denominator. Um, so, uh, you know, vice versa, I know that 5 sixths is the biggest fraction here because it's the closest to 1. 
So basic gist of this is that when you've got number fractions whose numerators are the same, uh, if you want to put them in order, the smallest has got the biggest denominator, and the biggest has got the smallest denominator. Draw a picture if that helps. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Uh, you've got several extra minutes that you could use to do some IXL tonight since you're already logged into the Internet, and we'll come in tomorrow and do some practice with these on a problem set. Have a great night.